Good morning, this is your host Rusty James. It is August 11, 2015, and this is The Ride. Hello fellow travelers through life. It's me again, Rusty James, making my daily commute. And you're along for the ride, I'm so glad you're here. It is a beautiful, ooh, looks like I'm gonna hit a fog bank pretty soon. I was gonna say it's a beautifully clear morning. That's pretty funny, because in about 10 minutes, it won't be. Boy, that speaks to life, doesn't it? One moment it's clear sailing, and then the next, boom, you're in a cloud bank and you gotta put the brakes on. That's really interesting. Anybody going through a fog bank today? I mean like emotionally, spiritually? It looks like this thing is just like one big cloud that looks like it's only lasting for... Well, you just don't know how long this thing lasts. You know, you know me, I like to draw parallels. I might go metaphor crazy today. Nope, it's dissipating. That's cool. So, you just never know how long that little bit of a valley or storm or cloud or whatever is going to hang around. You know what? This is amazing. I, my highway just made a bend of about, oh, I don't know, 45 degrees off of the direction I had been traveling. And had it just been straight, I would have gone right into that fog bank and I would have been still stuck in it. But I veered off that course just by 45 degrees, not even that, maybe 35. And I completely avoided that. Now that can preach. I made a course adjustment and I avoided trouble. Anybody need to make a course adjustment today? That's kind of a dumb question. Yes, the answer is yes for all of us. How do I know? Because none of us are perfectly following the Word of God. When you're driving a car, if you're behind the wheel right now, you know about every, I don't know, I'm just gauging it right now for me. Probably every one to two seconds, you're making minute course adjustments to keep you on your lane, keep you in your lane. And if you need to make a lane change to avoid a problem, you make a more deliberate directional modification. Do I pray and ask God to make that modification? No. I make that modification myself. How do I do that? I use my mind. I'm having to do it right this second, right now. Have to avoid a big truck. I made a course adjustment. You can hear him go by me. Or I'm going by him. And now I'm making a course adjustment to get back to where I should be. That big truck, he was my friend that was inviting me out to go partying. And you know, my friend's pretty moral, but every once in a while he might whip out some extracurricular activities in the chemical realm. And so I avoided that situation. See ya situation. And I am on my path again. You know, we've got friends who do those kind of things. And if we're not careful, if we get caught up in that, it might mess up our path. I'm at a point now where the, there's a fog bank to my left and to my right. And I'm going down the straight and narrow. This is funny. If my course was adjusted right now, 
I would be in the fog bank. I wouldn't be able to see as clearly. But right now I can see very clearly to avoid those trouble spots. Why don't we be the friend that other people would want to choose to hang with? And maybe some of what we got going on rubs off on them. How about that? We could change the world. We are changing the world. If you're listening to this podcast, you want to change the world. It starts with who? It starts with you. It starts with me. We want to change the world. We want to change the world. Somebody write a song and send it to us. I promise I'll play part of it. How do you change the world? If it starts with me, how do you change the world? I think that we need to be able to be at a point where we can be that friend who rubs off on other folks instead of the other way around. How is that possible? How can that happen? We got to have something that somebody else wants. You know, if, if I go hang out with my friend who has the substances and I dabble in that world, it gets me off track. But if I'm doing that dabbling, I kind of know that that thing is there and maybe I want just a little bit of it. There's something in me that would maybe want that. Well, let's turn it around. I know I've got some friends in the past who've been in that situation. And I know their life tells me that there are times when, when they want what I got my relationship with God that I fully trust in that my God that my father who is God of all almighty creator has got my back and these friends that I'm talking about they they don't have anybody who's got their back and they see in me more of a stability than they they are experiencing and, and they want that but the pull for that isn't as strong as the, the pull they're getting from other forces in their life. So in order to attract them, I can do two things. And really I should do only one of these two things. Either I can behave in such a way and have a persona and a a way about myself that accepts their behavior and accepts that lifestyle so that they don't feel the pain of having to confront maybe a change that they might need to make in their life. But that's the weak stance for me and for you. Or the other option is to be tuned into the Lord and have the power of the living God operating in your life in such a way that it's unmistakable that your life is being affected by our God. That's the way I want to be. And I keep wondering, well, how is that going to be possible? I can't whip it up. And you're right, you can't. You can't whip it up. What you do is you let your mind be renewed by washing it in the Word every day, every hour if you can. The more I do it, the more I want to do it, I've found. And it's not just because I need material for the podcast, although that's part of it, I mean, I'll admit, but I get such a rush learning new things out of the Word, and I read it. A number of times but I get new stuff all the time you need to get into it and find that out that that's true you need to do that 
if you're not already. We need to live our life in such a way that it's unmistakable that there has been a change in us. You know, life is too short to just kind of float along the stream. You need to stand up in the stream and let there be a wake forming around you. I had the picture of that. One time I wrote a, a poem. Yeah, yeah, I write poems. Can you believe it? I mean, I write songs too, so hey, that's cool. Poems, maybe not so much, but lyric, yeah, that's cool. Well, it's the same thing, dude. Poems are just a song that I don't have the music written for yet. But I wrote a poem. I wrote a lyric without music. And it talked about what we need to do. And one thing we need to do is stand in the river of culture and let there be a wake that forms around us. And that wake will affect other people. It'll either drive them away or pull them closer. And really, that's their deal. That's their decision to make. But you need to stand up and decide what it is you're standing for. That's all I got to say about that. Life should not be a no-wake zone. You make your wake. <laughs> I just passed a car that had the total of three wheels touching the ground. The fourth wheel was not to be found. Of course, I'm going to have to say this. If you're not into the Word of God, it's like you're driving a car with three wheels. You're grinding that fourth wheel on the ground and you're going in circles. No way in the world you're going to be able to stay on the path that God has for you if you don't have all gears running, all cylinders firing, and all wheels on the ground. So this morning I actually wanted to talk to you guys about something that I've been thinking about and that was a issue we're dealing with with this house that we're buying. And well, everything looked great on this house. I mean, we the minute we saw it, we wanted it, which was a testimony because for months and months and months, my wife and I have been looking and just couldn't find what really spoke to us. And one day we saw this one and Christy told me, I don't think I can see anything wrong with it as she's looking through the pictures and looking at the information. <laughs> as though our expectation was something was going to be wrong and we couldn't find anything wrong with it. Everything looked great. And you know, cosmetically, it did. It was beyond our expectation and that was great. And we love the house. But since we've put an offer on it, we've discovered some things in the infrastructure that, well, they're wanting. And one of them, well, we're going to talk a little bit about this as it relates to the life of a person, but one of them is, if you know anything about houses that are out in the country, you know that the waste that a house generates uh, has to be eliminated. And if you live in the city, it's just the sewer system. You just, you know, your toilet's flush and your, your, your washing machine's empty into the sewer lines and it goes back to the city and it gets handled by, by the municipality. But out in the country, it goes into uh, the septic system, which handles the waste biologically and then disposes of it in a drain field on your property and it simply allows the the liquid 
to percolate into the ground and kind of handle it naturally. Nothing wrong with that. But in our case, the drain field was flawed and was unable to percolate, I think due to a lot of clay. So the drain field was backing up. And what complicated the matters even more is that we have a, a system in this home that's called a geothermal system and it uses water from the well to create heating and cooling for the house. And without getting too in depth, it was done in an improper way, really, for the kind of water that we have at that house. And the water was high in mineral content. And what would happen is they would pull the water out of the well, use it for heating and cooling, and then dump it into the sewer system. Now if your water, if what's coming in is good, that probably would have been fine. Might have been fine. We'll leave that metaphor right there. It would probably have been fine. But the water was contaminated, if you will, and what came in had corrupted some of the inner workings of the system. Makes, makes your heat exchangers crudded up, makes your pump crudded up. They were having to replace that more often than they should. And then all that extra mineralized water is hitting the drain field and not percolating down. So you're having a problem. If you let this thing go too long, your waste will back up into the house. It can't go anywhere. That is not good. So, you know, we're dealing with that. We'll get that solved. Not a problem. Don't cry for me, Argentina. We're going to be fine. But maybe God is using this thing to help me talk to you about what you let into your life. Because what you let in affects your life. So I was reading in Matthew yesterday. As you know, I've been hanging out in Matthew a bit. And I think there's a couple things I want to touch on from Matthew. One is about prayer. Well, actually, we're, we're going to, I guess I'll go right there with that now, since I'm thinking about it. And whatsoever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Somewhere else is talking about if two of you agree, you can say to this mountain, move and it will be moved. And I really had this strong desire driving home last night from work that when I got home that Christy and I would pray over this house. And all along I've been really wanting to focus on making sure that this was the right thing, that we didn't bite off more than we could chew, that the family that's selling the house to us would be blessed in this process. This whole process, you know, buying and selling anything, you know, you're kind of at odds, <laughs> the seller and the buyer, with each other. And I don't want it to be ugly. And so, I, we're, so when, when I got home, we sat down and we had a deliberate prayer. And I'm really grateful that my daughter was within earshot because I, I want her to know that, I mean, she knows we do it, but we don't do it as much as we probably should. And I want her to know that we believe that God is a God that touches situations. So we prayed that the house infrastructure issues would all be handled in a timely way and that 
you know, that the family that's selling us a house would be blessed in, in whatever way they need to have blessing. And also that I mean, we feel like the Lord's given us this house, but you know, it can always be us just wanting it. <laughs> you know, just, you know, human want. Could be that. I kind of believe it's the other way around simply because there's a lot of things that that were desires that we had for the house and every single one, I mean, really, every single one was there. And we hadn't seen that before. But, you know, it's a decision we're making and, you know, we're going to make the decision and then we believe that the Lord will bless it. So anyway, it was really a deliberate prayer and it felt really good to do that. You know, if there are any mountains with that whole house thing, we just pray that, that the Lord would move those mountains. Any roadblocks, move them. Wow, this is some pretty country. Wow. While you're going through life, every once in a while just stop and smell those roses. We live in a beautiful place. I don't care if you're in the middle of the country or if you're in downtown New York. God made a beautiful place. Okay. So anyway, prayer. But now when I come back to the idea of what you put into your mind, there's something in, there's a scripture in, I believe, Philippians. I have all these scriptures in front of me. I just have to scroll through. But you know I'm driving. Hey, I was going to say one other thing about that. While you got your Bible next to you, um, since I can't go to all the scriptures that are around the one I'm talking about, I want to encourage you guys to do that. Because I do that later. I listen to this stuff later. Because I really believe the Lord has a word in season for all of us when I do this and I want to get the full effect so later on I don't do it all the time but I try to listen to all this stuff hear what Rusty James is talking about what scriptures he, he's referring to and then look at the context of it which is really really important you need to do that and it's just a good habit to get into because I'm just using sound bites, basically, scripture sound bites. But it's your job to figure out if I'm using it improperly or if I'm really using it according to the context that it was written for. Okay? All right. So it was in Philippians uh, chapter 4, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Also, the love chapter in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is another one to check out. as it relates to what you're to be thinking about. But he's basically telling us what we ought to be thinking about. And that gets me convicted a bit because, you know, when I'm hopping on the internet, even if I'm just gonna go to Yahoo Mail, okay, because my, my mail's Yahoo. The minute I go to Yahoo Mail, I get that Yahoo main page pop up and it's gonna have all sorts of stuff 
the titillating uh, news snippets of the day and I'll admit it every once in a while I'll follow one of those links because they know what's going to hook you I'll follow one of those links it'll be I I'm just telling you the honest truth guys I'll see something that a lot of times it's somebody's failure this sports person had a failure there's a divorce here there's uh, some kind of a problem this person lost their mind and and did this heinous crime those are the things that cause me to look and you know I think I know why it is maybe and maybe it's part of the human psyche we we look at those things it's like a train wreck we, we want to see it because we contrast that against our life and think oh the train wreck I'm part of is nowhere near that so I must be doing okay I think we sometimes do that as part of us you know they, you look at a failed marriage of a of a Hollywood actor actress that kind of thing and we think well we thought that was gonna last yeah right well we thought that was gonna last and it's fallen apart and I guess my life isn't nearly as tragic as that and we somehow get some kind of a a bump to our um, I lost the word we get a bump to our um, self man I totally lost that word but anyway oh my goodness check it honey they are tearing up I think they're tearing up the drain field right now I'll get a better look in a minute I am just passing by sorry about that that was a little private message to my beautiful wife I'm right at the house as we speak so if you've been following this podcast you know it's coming up in 30 seconds I have to slow down because there's a car in front of me and they're gonna really wonder what's going on with this crazy behind me let's see are they doing anything no I don't see it yet that would make day four I'm going around Jericho claiming the land so we some so I sometimes get hooked by this ugliness of the world and I'm reminded and I'm convicted that you know what's the point of doing that I'm supposed to be thinking about holy and lovely things and it's true I get sucked into a, a, a a web there because all this information is just out there for the taking if you're not careful you'll get sucked in you could do Facebook all day long I know why is it that we can do Facebook for three hours but we can't read the word for 20 minutes if that's you consider this a little bit of a Holy Spirit conviction because you will have more life in your life if you can flip those numbers around and it doesn't have to be a struggle you're not gonna be able to flip it around and you know the next day it's you're not gonna be able to do it like that I don't think unless God really supernaturally just fires you up and that's super desire of your heart which that can happen too but for most people for me included uh, it takes a little bit of discipline but discipline is not bad I discipline myself and get into the word and the beautiful thing is is if I discipline myself I start getting the love for the thing and then I don't have to discipline myself anymore I don't even have to try you know brother Billy Graham probably doesn't need to 
fight against certain sinful urges that he once maybe had to fight against. And I'm not saying that because he's older now. I'm just saying that once you see God in your life and able to conquer certain things, you realize that you, the power to conquer those things comes from outside yourself. And then you rest in that. If you think that your fight against addictive behavior, smoking, whatever it happens to be, if you think the solution is just willpower on your own part, you'll fail. I'll tell you why, because even if you succeed, you'll believe that you did it. And I suppose if you have real strong willpower, you might be able to do it without God. But I really believe that things that hold our life in, in an addictive control really have to be broken by something outside of ourself. Because if we break it, if we think we do it all on our own, we take all the glory. God had nothing to do with it. And I believe that really breaking cycles like that is a God thing. It, it happens in the spiritual realm and it's not just mortal. And this is my two cents. So, you know, I haven't even touched on what I wanted to touch on, so let's get to it. So we'll run out of time. So the things that we put into our mind affect us. Also in Matthew, it talks about, you know, the things that we put into our mouth don't defile us, but what comes out of our mouth does. But you think about what comes out of your mouth. I mean, that was a scripture. This is where the context is important. That was a scripture about what you put. I think it was maybe whether or not. I think the uh, Pharisees were complaining because the disciples didn't wash their hands before eating. And Jesus is saying, you know what? It's not what we put into our mouth that defiles us, but what comes out of our mouth. So it actually doesn't really relate to what I'm talking about here, except for the fact that what comes out of your mouth, you know, what you think is what you're going to speak about. And I've, I've watched that happen in my life. In different seasons of my life, if I'm putting the wrong things in, I will start speaking what I am calling truth based on what I'm putting into myself. It's powerful that that happens that way. It's powerful. If you constantly put in the, the Yahoo news feed into your mind and, and, the, and the world's news and everything, you will believe that every marriage is going to fail. You will believe that humanity is just miserable, failed creatures. Now that will be true, but they don't have to stay that way. God renews people. God makes them new creatures. But if we constantly see the failures of man and all that, we're going to just start thinking that, you know, I'm not so bad. And look at all these other failures. I'll just live with my own personal morality and, and that should be good enough because I'm so much better than all these other yahoos that are failing all over the place. Well, God made you to be even more more better than that. Because he's called you to be his church, his chosen people, his children, his adopted sons and daughters. He's called you to be a representation of him. And he is perfect. So start turning down the spigot that's feeding the world's lies really into your life you know you don't have to cold turkey yet because you probably start hating God for that because 
then you'll just see him as just this taskmaster that has all these rules that you have no hope of following. No, I'm just saying just turn it down a little bit and then turn up, turn up the fuel that God has for you and start making that, that 180. You start doing that and you'll start sensing that there's a power in that. You don't want to have a, a life that you're feeding into yourself corrupted things is causing you to speak corrupted talk, which causes you to have a corrupted worldview, which causes you to have thoughts and, and uh, corrupted dreams, you know, corrupted thoughts and dreams. You don't want that. You want to have the life of God flowing through you. And that's the other thing, too. When, you, when you're putting the world's stuff into you, it kind of just gets in and kind of takes root. But God's stuff, it, kinda, it, it flows through you. you know, the love of God comes into your life, and then you want to share that with other people. You want to not necessarily preach to other people, though that's part of it, I suppose, but the heart of the Lord is to bring restoration to people. So you know people that need it, restoration. So then you, you share God's love with them. And I'm not saying preaching again. I'm, I'm saying just love them. Be there for them. If they need a ride somewhere, give them a ride. If it's a single mom who's got kids and she just is frustrated beyond her wits, offer to take her kids and let her have a night out. They seem kind of like inconsequential, but to that woman, it's crazy important. And you know, it could bless her kids too. Let the love of Jesus flow through you. You need to be able to let your life be a conduit, not a basin. So I used to think that, you know, I, I would have it all together if I kept on collecting things, money and, and uh, you know, but I, I'm finding that if you let go of things, it actually leaves more of a hole in your life to allow more blessing to come into it. So let certain things go. So I, I'm kind of running out of things to say today. I hope that this encourages you. Keep on staying in the Word. Let me know how this is uh, affecting your life. Pray for me as we do this thing in the future. And I will pray for you, all right? So Lord, thank you for this beautiful day. We ask that your word be accomplished in the lives of those who are listening and in my life, Lord. We believe you have good things for your children and we want to share the love that you have given to us to the world around us in whatever form that may take. Lord, we thank you that you care about us and that you saved us and you brought us to this new place of new beginnings. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, fellow riders, I will catch you on the flip.